Hey, and today I'm going to show you one of my favorite photo editing apps on a mobile device. And by the way, this is available on both iPhone and on Android. It works on tablets, obviously. And it really has come a long way. It is Snapseed 2.0. And the good news is that it costs exactly the same amount as Snapseed 1.0, which is free. It's amazing that it's free. It's made by Google. It's well-sponsored. And they have gone leaps and bounds as far as editing apps go. It's one of my favorite editing apps, and you can tell that because it's here on my front page, right? <laughs> on my front screen, and I use it all the time. So let's go ahead and get uh, dive into it and I'm gonna open up Snapseed. Now, uh, Snapseed is re has really become a powerful photo editing tool, and if you talk to photographers who edit their photos, and, and, and you should to some degree, sometimes you wanna edit it heavily, and other times you don't wanna edit it much at all, or maybe just crop it, but Snapseed is amazingly powerful, and once you know how to uh, use some of the tools, you, you'll really see how powerful it is. Okay, one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on open photo there at the bottom and then open device, open from device. You can take a picture with Snapseed. I never do that. I, I usually take the picture ahead of time. I, I grab all my images. And then when I select the one that I want to edit, then I'll open from device. So let's go ahead and do that. And then I'm going to open up the camera roll. And uh, I recently went to Joshua Tree. And I, I have several images, but I haven't... I haven't edited them, so these are unedited images, and I'm going to open up that first one right there. Okay, the, the Snapseed has got a lot to it nowadays. There's a lot to it. I'm not going to be able to show it all in one video. So for today's tutorial, I'm going to limit myself on how long part one is going to be, and then I'm going to continue with part two and part three, or how, however many it takes, until I at least show the main uh, features of Snapseed. Okay, so today what I'm going to show you is stacks and how much control and power you really have in stacks. So one of the first things you're going to want to know is that, well, first of all, here's the histogram. So if you tap on that, you can turn it on and off. It's quite useful if you if you leave it on because what it is is it shows you how much of the picture is bright and how much of the picture is dark. And right now this is a an overall pretty well balanced picture image. But the way that you get to all of your filters and tools is right here. So you click on that and it will open up um, your tools at the top and then you've got your filters at the bottom which are sort of like combined and preset for you. Uh, they're pretty powerful too and they're pretty cool. Um, but we'll start up, up at the top first and, and uh, do things the way that I normally would. One of the first things I would probably do is tune an image. So uh, I'm gonna click on there and tune an image. Now, one of the things that you should know is as you work on with Snapseed is they designed it to be, to be used on small displays. So it's, it's designed with a high resolution displays in mind and to be adjusted with just one finger, which is amazing. That's all you need is just one finger and you can um, change brush size and do other things uh, with some very impressive um, user interfaces that they have. So one of the first things that you should know is um, if you slide up and down, you can get to different things within that tune image. So just within tune image, you can change brightness, you can change your ambience, your contrast, saturation, shadows, highlights, things like that. So if you wanted to change your, let's say your brightness, for instance, the way you would change it is now take your finger and go left or right. And as you, ch as you swipe it to the right, you'll notice it's getting brighter. And as you swipe it to the left, you'll notice that it's getting dimmer. And you'll also be able to tell kind of where you are by, that, by a number here and also up at the top. See how the number's changing right there? So as I go up higher, it, it's getting brighter and getting dimmer. Um, this image was actually pretty okay. So I'm gonna leave it pretty close to where it was. But I'm gonna change something else so you can see the difference. I'm gonna go to ambience. And as I swipe my finger to the right, you'll notice that the, the, the picture really is changing. So I'm gonna go um, pretty high just to make it a, sort of a drastic change. And what, I'm, what you're gonna notice is if you tap this thing right here and hold your finger down, that the picture itself will show what it 
what it looks like without the change, w without all of the changes. So as I lift my finger up off of there, then it goes back to the change. Let me show you another one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slide my finger up to contrast. That's usually one I usually like to punch just a little bit. So I'm going to slide my finger to the right, and I'm going to get a little bit more contrasty. And you'll notice the, the, the image is getting a little bit more, yeah, a little more punch to it like that. And so I'm just leave it right there. And again, if I tap on that, you can see all the changes being taken away. All right. Uh, maybe I'll do um, shadows. So I'm going to bring out some of the shadows here by sliding my finger to the right, which kind of takes away some of the shadows. It's kind of nice. You can even see this plant getting a little bit lighter there. And then I think maybe the last thing I'm going to do while we're here is I'm going to give the saturation a little bit of a bump. Now, you can go ridiculously crazy. If you go to the right, like to 100%, it looks like everything's radioactive and orange and absolutely unnatural. Um, giving it a little bit of a touch, of just a little kiss of saturation is always a good thing. So I want to see what it looks like um, with uh, w without it. And then I'm going to give it just a little bit, just to give it some interest, uh, maybe like that. And again, I can tap on that to see what the difference is between the, 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 the picture untouched and the picture. It's already looking pretty cool. But let's go ahead and hit um, accept right there. And now I have a one right there. Well, what does that mean? Well, let's let's do another one and find out. So I'm going to tap on here again, and I am going to uh, choose vignette. Okay. So vignette uh, either darkens or lightens the outside, and you can kind of see if you take your finger and you you move that blue circle, you can see the circle of what's not going to be affected. And if I slide my finger to the left, I can see. Um, really a whole lot of darkness there and I can control how how dark it is by sliding my finger to the left or the right if I slide it and continue to slide it to the right I can actually make the outside of the picture brighter than the inside of the picture and again this this part here shows me what's not being affected see if I move that like that so um, I like to put a little bit of a dark vignette just to bring focus towards my center subjects. And so I'm going to bring my vignette down. Let's see, maybe just a little kiss of it like that's ah, too much. Uh, may, maybe maybe something like that. And again, I can tap on here to see what it's like without it. And uh, I kind of like how that's coming out. All right, I'm going to go ahead and click accept. Now I've got a two. Hmm, what's going on? Well, if I tap on that two, you'll notice that all of my changes so far from the original to the tune image uh, phase, to the vignette phase, are being kept in sort of a stack, right? But let me show you one of the coolest things. And by the way, if and let's say you wanted to add another one. Well, I can hit close right here, and I can just add another, another thing. So let's say that I wanted to, oh, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna go to detail. <clears throat> and on here if i slide it up and down i can i can sharpen it a little bit and then maybe i'll slide it to structure and i'm going to give it uh, quite a bit of structure about like that and let's tap on there to see the difference so by using detail i've i've added a little bit more i'm going to go ahead and click accept and now we have a 3 well check this out so let's say that I, I want to um, change what I did in this phase of tune image, right? If I tap on it a second time, it brings out several choices. One, I could delete any changes I made from that particular thing. This is magical. I will show you that in a second. This one it means I can just kind of readjust those changes I made way back in the past. So if I tap on that right there, I can now it's like I'm back in the past and I'm, I'm, I'm doing the work I did back then. So if I slide up and down, you'll notice my ambience is still at 89. My contrast is something I changed. I changed my saturation and I changed my shadows, right? Well, let's say that I wanted to change my saturation and um, let's say that I lost my mind and I, I wanted that saturation to be like ridiculous. So I'm gonna slide my finger way to the right and it just changed all the way to some saturation change of 90, 93, right? Let's go ahead and click. <laughs> Let's go ahead and click accept. And I'm doing this for a reason, so you can see the difference. Okay, and I'm gonna hit. I'm gonna go ahead and click accept. Now, as I click on vignette and details, it's like I made that change in the past, and it's still being taken into here. But here is a really cool thing. I'm gonna open up the uh, tune images again, 
And what I'm going to do now is not just alter something, but I'm going to use this brush tool, which allows me to mask in certain areas. Now, let's say that I didn't want um, this to be too radioactive, but I wanted the sky to be blue. So, and that was saturated, right? So I can take my finger now. And by the way, if you zoom in, you, that's the brush size. So as you make the, uh, as you zoom in, the brush is actually in relation to the picture. It's getting smaller. So I can get into super detail if I want, but let's just, let's just um, brush in some saturation on the sky right there with my finger. And as you can see, as my finger goes over that area, it's brushing in uh, that, that ridiculous blue, right? And let's say that I wanted to brush in. Uh, by the way, if I tap that guy right there, it can show you the reverse. So now this is not saturated and this is saturated. So I'm going to tap on that little thing again. And I, it's because my finger, I brushed in the saturation. If I tap on that eyeball, by the way, you'll see red, which will show you where I'm putting uh, the filter, the saturation filter back in. So I'm going to tap on that to get rid of it. And I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to just kind of brush down in this lower area right here. And as you can see, it's it's a little ridiculous on the on the color, but just for the sake of you understanding how it works. So I've put it in. If I uh, tap on that eyeball, you can kind of see where what you've affected. And again, if I wanted to reverse it, I can tap that and have this part not saturated and this part is saturated. But I'm going to uh, leave it uh, like that and, and then it looks a little crazy but just to show you how you can decide where you want the effect then I'm gonna hit accept and that was the tune image I'm gonna go back to uh, and click on here because that was the last thing that I did and there is my uh, uh, picture once again I'm gonna hit close so my picture has um, several layers and it's all um, stacked up and I, I just showed you how you can do several things and save it okay so you can save the the different changes um, and and um, and you can mask certain things out and you can add even more layers if you want by going into here or maybe going into the into the filters all right um, this tutorial has already already been going for 10 minutes and I don't want to pack everything into part one I'm gonna show you even more well let me show you how to save just so you can let's say that you really like this picture <laughs> and with everything you did you hit save and then what you want to do is you want to save a copy so you hit save a copy and that will allow you to save that copy to um, your uh, to, to your to your device okay and so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do that and save and save a copy and it's it's saving by the way all the little changes that I made and something very special as well it's saving those those presets Okay, that's going to do it for part one. Come back as I create part two and look, look out for part two so that I can show you more that you can do with um, this particular uh, app, Snapseed by Google. <laughs>